No. We will study the I door thought process. Now before we study the thought process, we should understand the Bhavanga. Are you on the diagram chart 4.2 you will see stream of Bhavanga at the beginning and also at the end now Bhavanga is the name of some types of consciousness now you, you already know what consciousness is is the awareness of the object now at the moment of rebirth of for human beings at the moment of conception a type of consciousness arises as produced by karma in the past so as a result of karma in the past that type of consciousness is produced that con type of consciousness arises at the very first moment in one's life so that very first moment we call relinking that means linking two lives together or something like that so that type of consciousness arises and along with that type of consciousness there are mental factors, data seekers and also material properties caused by karma now there are four causes of matter some matter caused by karma, some by uh, consciousness some by temperature or climate and some by food so at the moment of conception, at the moment of rebirth, especially for, let's say, human beings, at that very first moment, a type of consciousness arises. And that consciousness is a resultant consciousness, is a result of karma in the past. And with that consciousness, there are jaita seekers. And also, with that consciousness, there are material properties produced by karma. So these three combined we call uh, rebirth or conception. And that type of consciousness arises again and again through life. Now karma is very powerful. Not just once. It gives results. So that result in consciousness that arises at the very first moment in one's life is repeated many times during life. But at the very first moment it is called relinking consciousness. But at the other moments following that it is called bhavanga. Now, bhava means life and anga means constituent. So, bhavanga means constituent of life or part of life. That means if bhavanga does not arise, life would have ended. There would be no more life. So, since the bhavanga keeps the life going on and on, this type of consciousness is called bhavanga. So the relinking consciousness and bhavanga consciousness are actually identical. It is of the same type. But at one moment it is called relinking consciousness and at other moments it is called bhavanga consciousness. And this bhavanga consciousness uh, flows on and on and on when we do not encounter any object. Right now, 
Say, I am talking and you are listening. You, you have listening thought processes going on. And in between these thought processes, the stream of Bhavanga intervenes. So it is like a buffer zone. So between two thought processes, there is always the stream of Bhavanga. Now how much or how long the stream of Bhavanga, we do not know. Because in a second, billions of thought movements can arise. There can be billions of uh, movements of Bhavanga flowing on and on. That is, when we do not see any object, when we do not hear any sound and so on. Uh, for example, when we are deep in sleep, we do not see, we do not hear. So at that moment, the stream of Bhavanga goes on and on. Then, when we see something, that means when an object enters into the avenue of our eye, that means within the uh, eye range when something comes in, then we say we see that object. So that object, let's say a visible object, when it comes into the avenue of the eye, it is said to strike at the eye. Now when it strikes at the eye, actually one bhavanga has already passed. It is like when you, you are running fast, say you cannot stop at the place you want to stop. Say you may run two or three, three steps and then you stop because the speed you are running is great. So in the same way, the stream of Bhavanga, or flow of Bhavanga is uh, flowing with force. And so when the object strikes at the eye, it cannot stop immediately. And so it uh, pass one Bhavanga, one movement of Bhavanga. So in the diagram, that pass Bhavanga is number one. So, although it comes into the avenue of the eye, at, at the number one moment, actually it does not strike yet. But at the second moment, it strikes the eye. So when it strikes the eye, it also strikes at the bhavanga, the visible object. So now, Bhavanga vibrates, it shakes. So there are two moments of shaking Bhavanga. The first moment here, number two, is called vibrational Bhavanga. Now it is vibrating, shaking. And the second moment, number three, is called arrest Bhavanga. That means Bhavanga stops with that. There will be no more Bhavanga after that. So, for two moments, Bhavanga shakes. And the first moment is called shaking or vibrational Bhavanga. And the, and the second moment, number three, is called arrest Bhavanga or stop Bhavanga. Bhavanga moments are like inactive moments. So, when we are asleep, our mind is inactive. So Bhavanga moments, even when we are awake, are also in, inactive moments. But now, something to be seen has come into the avenue of our eye, and then it strikes at our eye and at the same time with the, at the Bhavanga, and now Bhavanga vibrates. So after two vibrating, Bhavanga stops. And the active thought moments take over. The first active thought moment in this series or process is number four. Eye door adverting. Now actually the name is five door adverting. But for this particular process, because it is seeing thought process, we can say eye door adverting. If you find eye door adverting in this 
chart you will not find it what you will find is five door adverting five cents door adverting so that five cents door adverting consciousness arises now it has the function of turning to the object now the mind turns to the object formerly the mind was uh, something like at rest it is idle now it becomes active now it turns to the object when it turns to the object it is like oh what is this something like that it some kind of thinking there so that movement is called five door adverting uh, here i door adverting so advert means to turn to so from this point beginning with this point the active mind comes into contact with the object after the mind turns to the object there is it disappears next what arises i consciousness i consciousness means seeing consciousness So at this moment number 5 we see the object and here see means just just very simple seeing actually at this point we do not know that it, it is red or blue or whatever what we know is just we see an a visible object after seeing it now seeing consciousness arises and disappears and then next what consciousness arises receiving consciousness arises so after seeing the mind accepts or receives the object the object is uh, as it were given to the mind and now uh, first it turns to the object and it sees it and then it takes it it receives it so that moment is called receiving consciousness later on uh, we will go to this chart to identify this after receiving is there is the investigating consciousness so after receiving something you try to see what it is so you investigate it into into the object so there is the investigating consciousness arising after receiving after investigating comes determining consciousness ah uh, this is the object like that so it it defines the object at this moment and after determining now everything is finished receive investigate and then determine after determining comes what are called jivanas Jivanas is actually the full experience of the object. The consciousness, the types of consciousness before jivana also experience the object, but it is only at the jivana moments that the object is really experienced, so fully experienced. and it is said that jivana moments always arise uh, under normal conditions seven times so there are seven times of jivana now jivana is translated as impulsion you know what impulsion is i don't know <laughs> It, it it is as alien to me as the word jivana <laughs> so so we we prefer to keep jivana as it is not translating it into english whatever so jivana the real meaning of jivana means speed force so when you are running fast then that means you are running with jivana so these types of consciousness actually one type of consciousness repeating seven times it has force since it has force it is only during these moments that 
the object is fully experienced. After the seven moments of jhavana come two moments of registration. It is like uh, after taste. So you eat something and then later you swallow the, some remnants of the food down. So something like that. So these two moments are called the registration. After the second registration, it falls into stream of Bawanga again. So at the second registration, how many types of consciousness, how many moments of consciousness uh, have you got? 17, right? So when 17 moments are full, then the, the visible object also disappears. The visible object is a matter, and so it, it lasts for how many thought moments? 17, right? 17 thought moments. So from number 1 to number 17, the visible object exists or lasts. So when the process reaches the reg second registration, the seven thought movements are complete and so this thought process disappears and at the same time the visible object also disappears. So this is one thought process. In this diagram, you see the zeros or circles. So they represent three sub-moments. So the first circle is the arising, and the second circle, presence, and the third circle, dissolution. So they, they represent three sub-moments. And why circles or zeros, and not other signs? In this book, the asterisks are used. But there is meaning. Why we show this with these circles? <laughs> so we want to show that there is nothing. Everything is white. <laughs> there is no substance. And they just arise and disappear. And so no permanency. And no permanent entity. And so on. So in order to show that these are just the thoughts or cheetahs arising and disappearing, we use these uh, circles or zeros. And we use three zeros here to represent the three sub-moments. So after the second registration moment, this is number 17, it falls into stream of Bawanga again. Actually, stream of Bawanga could be in the beginning also Many moments there, not just one moment. So many moments of a stream of Bawanga and also at the end also the stream of Bawanga should go many moments again. So between every active thought processes, these Bawangas intervene. So this is one thought process. Now, when uh, you read about the atom, how an atom is composed of and so on, they say you have to blow up the picture millions of times. So uh, then there is the nucleus and then the, the other particles mm, rotating around that, right? So you have a diagram. So that diagram is millions of times enlarged so that you can understand. In the same way, this diagram is also millions of times enlarged. Now we are talking about pas bhavanga, vibrational bhavanga, address bhavanga and so on. When I am saying pas bhavanga, all these something, the thought movements have gone. <laughs> but we have to do this so that we understand each and every moment in this thought process. So again, when a visible object is presented to us, to our eyes, 
it strikes at our eyes and at the same time it strikes at the stream of Bhavanga. So when it strikes, it strikes when one moment is already passed because the, the flow of Bhavanga is so, uh, so fast that one moment uh, has to pass. And then there are two moments of shaking or vibrating Bhavanga. And the first moment is just called vibrational Bhavanga and second moment is called arrest Bhavanga. So the Bhavanga stops there. So there the inactive thought moments stop. Now begin active thought moments. And that is beginning with I door or five door adverting. And after adverting or turning to the object, there is seeing. And after seeing, there is receiving. After that, investigating. After that, determining. And after that, javana. The full experience of the object. There are seven moments of the javanas. And then there follow two moments of registration. And then the idea thought process is finished and so uh, back into the stream of Bhavanga. Now in order to understand this, the commentaries tell us a simile of mangoes. The simile of mangoes is mentioned here. Oh yes. Page 158. The ancient teachers of Abhidhamma illustrate the cognitive process occurring in the sense doors with the simile of the mango. A certain man with his head covered went to sleep at the foot of a fruiting mango tree. Then a ripe mango loosened from the stalk, fell to the ground, grazing his ears. So he is asleep with his head covered and then a mango falls maybe close to his ears. Awakened by the sound, he opened his eyes and looked. Then he stretched out his hand, took the fruit, squeezed it and smelled it. Having done so, he ate the mango, swallowed it appreciating its taste and then went back to sleep. So if you remember this simile, you know the, you, you remember the thought process. So here the time of the man sleeping at the foot of the mango tree is like the time when the bhavanga is occurring. So bhavanga, 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 the flow of bhavanga. The instant of the ripe mango falling from its stalk and grazing his ear is like the instant of the object striking one of the sense organs. Here, in our example, the eyes. Uh, for instance, the eye. The time of awakening through the sound is like that of the five door adverting consciousness turning towards the object. So he wakes up. That is like turning towards the object, five sense door adverting. The time of the man opening his eyes and looking is like eye consciousness accomplishing its function of seeing. So seeing consciousness has, has the function of seeing. So it accomplishes its, uh, the function of seeing when it arises, the eye consciousness. The time of stretching out his hand and taking the mango is like that of the receiving consciousness, receiving the object. So receiving consciousness has the function of receiving. The time of squeezing the fruit is like that of the investigating consciousness, investigating the object. What is this? Something like that. The time of smelling the mango is like that of the determining consciousness, determining the object. Now, uh, determining that this is the object. The time of eating the mango is like that of Jawana experiencing the flavor of the object. So full, full experience of the object uh, occurs at those moments, seven moments of Jawana. The swallowing of the fruit while appreciating its taste is like the registration consciousness taking the same object as the Jawana face. 
So actually all cheaters in this process take the same object. And the man going back to sleep is like the subsidence back into the bowanga. So you remember this and uh, you remember the, the thought process. So this is I do thought process or seeing thought process. So when you see something, this thought process must take place first. And there are many more thought processes to come until you say, I see a thing or I see a man or I see a woman. So you have to go through some more uh, thought processes. So this is just the initial awareness of the object. It's amazing. Uh, our mind works so fast. And if I s tell you, you see with your mind, not with your eye, what would you say? Suppose here is a microphone. So I see the microphone with my mind, but not with my eyes. Crazy? <laughs> okay. Strictly according to Abhidhamma. With this thought process, I just see the visible object here. I don't see the microphone yet. So in order to say I see the microphone, my mind has to go through many types of thought processes. And each type may be taking place hundreds of times. So only after about five kinds of thought processes could I say, I see the microphone, or I see the man, or I see the woman. So it's amazing. Now, we can apply our knowledge of the three previous chapters to this thought process. Now, Bhavanga. What types of consciousness are represented by Bhavanga? That means you have to go back to the third chapter, the chapter on functions. Uh, which types of consciousness function as relinking Bhavanga and and uh, death, duty. <laughs> so you have to find out that. The past bhavanga, vibrational bhavanga, and arrest bhavanga. They, they are actually one type of consciousness. So you have to find them out. And then, I do adverting or five-door adverting. Five-door adverting is it's too, it is too small for you to see. So these three, the, 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 top, the top of the three is the five-sense door adverting. So I do, number four here, I do adverting is that, that type of consciousness. And then I consciousness where is I consciousness? Here. No? And then receiving consciousness. <laughs> you have to be familiar with this card. And then investigating consciousness. Yeah. And determining consciousness. It is the second of the three. And then Javanas. Javanas can be any one of the Akusala and then Kusala and Kiriya. And registration, again you go back to third chapter on functions. You try to find out what types of consciousness have the function of registering. And then back to Bawanga again. So you can say many things about this thought process. It becomes very complex. Now each type of consciousness uh, you can pinpoint 
on this uh, diagram. And also, you can determine whether number 9 to number 15 should be unwholesome or wholesome. Number 9 to number 15 can be wholesome type of consciousness or unwholesome type of consciousness. Now I see something and I, I'm greedy about that thing. Now I cling to that thing. I'm attached to that thing. Then the number 9 to number 15 will be unwholesome. I see something but I'm not attached to them. I, I'm not attached to it. Or I am, say, I see the statue of the Buddha and I have devotion to the Buddha and so the number 9 to number 15 will belong to a wholesome type of consciousness. So whether uh, they are wholesome or unwholesome depends on my attitude, my inclination to, to the object. And the other types of consciousness are always uh, the resultant consciousness. They, they are the, not the wholesome or unwholesome, but resultant consciousness. Now, I consciousness is a resultant consciousness. Receiving is a resultant consciousness. Investigating is also receiving consciousness. Determining is functional consciousness. And Bhavangas are one of the 19. So I, I will tell you the number nine, uh, that the amount 19. So you have to find out uh, what these 19 chaitas are. So please open to 127 page. Now, functions. Under functions, you see one, one to three, rebirth, bhavanga, death. So these are the functions. And the type of consciousness that have these three functions are investigation, equanimity, and then what is SS? Sen sense fear, resultant, and SBL sublime resultant. So altogether 19. So these 19 types of consciousness have the function of rebirth, bhavanga and death. So in the diagram of the process the bhavanga, past bhavanga, vibrational bhavanga, arrest bhavanga are represented by one of these 19 types of consciousness. And then eye door adverting, that is five sense door adverting. Now you read down, at, uh, you, you see the word adverting. Now five door adverting and mind door adverting. So this is the first one, five door adverting. That you can ident identify like this. And then eye consciousness Seeing, right? Seeing function. And then receiving consciousness, down number 10, receiving. Investigating consciousness, number 11. Inve investigating equanimity and investigation, joy. So one of these two. And then determining is mind or adverting, the same. And then Javana, now there are 55 Javanas. But this is seeing, on, uh, seeing thought process. So not all 55 will apply here. Only the unwholesome, smiling, and sense fear, wholesome, and sense fear, functional, that's all. The, the others belong to jhanas. So you can ident identify 
these with this chart. And then registration. Now there are 11 of them registration. Investigation, equanimity, investigation, joy, and sense fear resultant. So one of them uh, will function as registration here. Two moments of registration. And then Bawanga. Okay. So you can identify these types of consciousness and their functions uh, looking at this chart. Now, what about doors? Through what door does this thought process arise? You are seeing, right? So through eye door. So this process uh, arises through eye door. That is why it is called eye door thought process. Now, what about basis? You have to find out uh, which base each chitta depends on. Now, eye consciousness depends on eye base, right? Seeing consciousness depends on eye base. But the others depend on, actually, heart base. Now, seeing consciousness depends on eye base. Hearing consciousness depends on ear base and so on. Uh, touching consciousness depends on body base. But other types of consciousness depend on heart base. So in order to find out that, you have to go to another chart. Page 147. So, eye base, eye consciousness. Uh, ear base, ear consciousness. Nose base, nose consciousness. Tongue base, tongue consciousness. Body base, body consciousness. And heart base, there are many. So, heart base A means always depend on heart base, and heart base S means sometimes only. So if we combine these two, then those that depend on heart base are 33 plus 42. There are many. So in this process, we see that the Javanas and also uh, receiving, right? Receiving, investigation, determining, Javana and registration all depend on heart base. So we have to find out the basis on which each type of consciousness depends. Now let us apply the knowledge of objects. What object do they take? For this thought process it is easy. Visible object. Because you are seeing something. So that, that something that is seen is the object of all all types of consciousness here. So it is said that in a given thought process, each individual uh, chaitas must take the same object. There must be no difference of objects uh, that they take in one given thought process. But there is one thought process where the individual Cheaters take different objects. We will come to that later. So in general, cheaters that arise in a thought process must take the same object. So all of these cheaters, from the idol adverting to the registration, must take the present visible object. But the object of Bhavanga is different. If you go back to the third chapter, you will see that the Bhavangas take Kama or sign of Kama or sign of destiny as objects. Now you will have to go back and read that. So Bhavangas have different objects 
and the others have uh, another different object and among them all these types of consciousness take uh, the same object so in this thought process uh, they take the visible present visible object as object so we can explain this process uh, with reference to objects now you can explain this with reference to objects with reference to dogs with reference to bases Now, if you know Patana, you will study Patana in the 8th chapter. If you know Patana, then you can explain with reference to Patana the relationship between these types of consciousness. And then relationship between the, these types of consciousness on the one hand and the object on the other and also uh, these types of consciousness on the one hand and the basis on the other. So a lot of things you can know in this one thought process so if you know Abhidhamma. So this is just one thought process. Now there are many more thought processes to come. So please refresh your, your memory of previous chapters again. So tomorrow when you come, I hope you will be more more familiar with the, uh, with the previous chapters. Yeah, now, I have one question. Uh, in this table, a complete eye-door process, it is stated that there are 14 acts of process consciousness. I'm a bit confused of why it's called 14 acts. Shouldn't it be called 17? Thanks. <coughs> now, the, the Bawangas, are not called process consciousness. Bhavangas are called process freed consciousness. So Bhavangas are outside the, the process. Although in, in this thought process there are 17 thought movements and Bhavangas are included, in, in reality the Bhavangas are outside the thought process. So when we leave the Bhavangas alone, we have only 14, right? from number 4 to number 17. So that is why here 14 acts of process consciousness. The Bhavangas are process freed consciousness. The, the Bhavangas are not included in, in the VT or process. If we count every arising of consciousness uh, beginning with past Bhavanga we get 17 arising of consciousness. Out of these 17, number 1, 2, and 3 are process-freed consciousness. They are, they are outside the process. The remaining 14 are process consciousness. So therefore there are f only 14 uh, process consciousness or in Pali, Viti Chittas. 